As we know, it does take a while to develop a good habit. One problem that we have today in our society is the culture of instant gratification. And this is produced largely by our technology. Because our technology has become so fast-paced, we expect instant results, right? That's what technology is teaching us. Everything is at the touch of a button. You've got um, Amazon Prime here. It's next day shipping, right? You have that in Canada too. People are so impatient when they want to buy something they want, they want it shipped the next day. Have you seen on Amazon when you're trying to buy something, it says, do you want this in the next 15 hours, 46 minutes, 19 seconds? <laughs> now really, does your life really depend on that? Such that you're so obsessed with when it will be shipped? This is the culture of instant gratification. Our youngsters especially are growing up being really impatient. They want things instantaneously. This culture has crept into the religious sphere. How? You see a young man, a young woman, they really want to be religious. They want to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want to change their lifestyle. What are they telling you? Say it. It's been a few days, I've been praying, I've been reading Qur'an, my life is not changing. Habibi, yani, until you expect your life to change 180 degrees after one week, <laughs> doesn't work that way. It takes time. Don't expect instant results. Some people, they pray one day, two days, three days, they expect instant results. It doesn't work that way. You need to be consistent, then after a while, you will see results. And if you force yourself too much, you could actually get a spiritual sore. Those of you who have worked out, you know what I mean. If you've not been in shape for a while, and then you go to the gym, and then suddenly for two, three hours you're working out, or if you have not ran in a while, and then you start running for even five minutes, what happens to your muscles? They get sore. A lot of people, they develop spiritual sores because suddenly they want to completely transform their lives 100% and they expect instant results. It doesn't work that way. Islam teaches us, take small steps. Take small steps. When it comes to any challenge you're going through, be consistent, the hadith states that which is little, minimum, but is consistent, is better than that which is a lot, but inconsistent. So for example, on night two we talked about lowering the gaze. That's very difficult for a lot of people. And I know a lot of youth, when they make the decision, that's it, they just want to walk outside like that. Not seeing anything, it's not going to work. It's going to work for like a week. Then you'll be back to your old habits. Why? Because you're not taking... Steps that are solid. It's too fast the transformation you're trying to achieve. So to give you a practical example, make it a goal that this week, I will lower my gaze two times. Stick to that. Two times. The following week, make it a goal five times. If you do this for 40 days, for three months, some very difficult habits, one year, you will find yourself in control. But if you have been exposed to the gaze every day, hundreds of times, and then suddenly you want to remove that from your life, it's not going. You're, it's, that's doomed to fail. Take small, powerful steps and keep increasing it. Just like with your diet, right? If you want a very successful diet, if your daily intake of calories is 4,000 calories and then suddenly you want to make it 1,000 calories, that's, that's not even healthy. Cut back slowly, that will work. Allow your body to prepare. The soul and the heart needs time to prepare. But consistency here is key. See, for those of you who have a strict diet, no desserts, right? Let's say no dessert. If you eat desserts once, 
Why is that harmful to your diet? It's just once, not going to kill you. But why is it bad? Why? Exactly. That's what ends up happening. I, I, I had a friend who was trying to you know, go on a diet, so he was cutting back on sugar. Now he loves his tea very sweet, like I do. I like it sweet. And he knew sugar is, you know, he had some health issues. So he decided to cut back on sugar. And to, to start doing that, he started using honey. So sometimes, you know, we'd go somewhere and there is no honey. He, he would be firm. No, no. I have to have it with honey. I'm not using sugar. I kept telling him why. He's like, if I break my law once, I'm going to break it again. And that's exactly what happened. Two weeks later, we went somewhere, there was no uh, honey. He's like, okay, let me, let me use sugar. That was the last time you started using honey. <laughs> See, you make an exception once, that's it. You fail. It's the same with the habits. Be consistent. Every single day, exercise a little bit of that habit. Try to develop it. Try to resist another habit. Even it's if, if it's at a bare minimum. But that consistency is extremely, extremely important. And this is what we learned from the path of Ahlul Bayt when it comes to changing our habits. Start small, small little steps, practical steps, but be firm and cons consistent. Don't ever compromise the consistency. Because if you compromise once, that's it. You will keep compromising again and again and again. So that's very important, brothers and sisters, when it comes to developing a healthy habit, a positive habit. Don't force yourself to the point where you break. Because once you break, your test becomes very difficult. So from day one, start with practical steps that you can take. If you do that, hopefully you should not have a problem. And always remember that throughout the year, the environment that you create around yourself is also very important in maintaining a positive habit, in having your heart turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The environment is very important. What you see, what you hear. Sometimes you could hear a beautiful dua, that awakens your heart. Sometimes a beautiful smell, a fragrant smell. It's mustahab by the way at the time of salah to either burn incense in your room, have a fragrant smell like the bukhur or something else, or just to apply perfume. That's mustahab. Why? Because the soul interacts with perfume. You're creating a healthy environment. If you create a healthy environment, this allows your heart to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you always have to create the proper in, in environment. Keep a clean spiritual environment. That in itself will help.